Welcome to Digital Asset News to get top stories in cryptocurrency digital assets and break them down to bite sized pieces. Today, we got some pretty fascinating stuff. First up, Goldman Sachs economist says Bitcoin is maturing, details how much institutional money has entered the market, and uh, hint, hint, he's uh, absolutely wrong. Also, we're going to take a look at what is going on with the uh, Bitfinex allegations as Bitfinex executives deny allegations of issuing USDT to pump Bitcoin, Tether backed by cash assets and a loan. This is a pretty interesting piece, which was actually shown originally over at What Bitcoin Did. We're going to dig into this and see exactly where this lawsuit is going. And those are the two articles we're going to go over today. A lot of information. So we'll just do two. And what I really want to do is take a look at what's going on with the market. So today, not too shabby, right? What is it? Uh, January 14th, 10 a.m. Not too bad. And uh, we got a lot of great things going on. First up, uh, Bitcoin. <laughs> Bitcoin. It's uh, up 15% in 24 hours. Uh, you can't beat that. We had a little bit of a, a pullback, which everybody says is healthy, but people lose their minds. And that's why I had people like Diddy on to explain to you that it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter in, th in this year. It's always in four year cycles. Uh, we have in 2012, uh, you know, there's an all, there is a, a halving, 2013 all time high, uh, 2014, uh, we have a little bit of a, a dip, a big dip, 2015 uh, re retracement. Same thing happened in 2016, halving, 2017, all time high, 2018, dip, 2019, reset, 2020, halving, 2021, all time high, 2022 uh, dip, big dip. So really, which don't be concerned about 2022. Look at what's going on in 2021 and look what you can invest into. I'm not a financial advisor. I can just tell you what I would invest into. And uh, I've already done my, my entire portfolio and where I'm going from here. And then uh, actually, if you've taken a look, I actually had a pretty good, uh, a decent piece over on uh, what was going on with Voyager. So check that out later on. So Ethereum up 16%. Hey, great. 1,237. We're almost at the all-time high, which was 1,400. Uh, USDT, nobody cares unless you're the state of New York and you're auditing them. XRP, watch out. 1% down to 29 cents. Dot, amazing run. Uh, dot, 28% for 24 hours, 26 for the week, and it's up to $12. And like I've always said on this channel, I invest in people. Um, Dr. Gavin Wood was part of what I call the Ethereum Mafia. Uh, kind of like the PayPal Mafia, but those guys uh, brought forth uh, Ethereum. You know, you have uh, something like that, uh, Dr. Gavin Wood. You got uh, Charles Hoskinson, who's also with Cardano, which is why I invested in him. You have Vitalik Buterin, uh, who brought forth Ethereum, obviously. That's why I invested in those projects. So always invest. I try to invest in people as much as possible because they're the ones that really make things work. So just look at who is behind the uh, actual project and you can't go wrong. Also, Litecoin, 13%, no idea why. 10%, uh, ADA, that's great. Uh, looks like they're rearing up for the Gogan era. Looks like they might uh, launch in the uh, end of February, early March, and that will give them smart contract functionability. Also, if you're looking for some place to uh, stake your Cardano, DNews has a stake pool. We have near perfect uptime. Uh, look in the description below uh, to check that out. Chainlink, up 10%, $16. Hopefully, we can hit to that 19, almost hit. Stellar, BNB coin, US, USDC, 30%. Anything great? Everything's up. It's, it's a great day, right? Uh, Theta, one of my holds, uh, $2.09. And if you noticed, uh, I am extremely biased towards my pick. You'll notice I'll, I'll, like, I'll like kind of skip over other things and go to my other, uh, the ones that I do. It's just because I'm biased and uh, I'm honest about it. That's just how it is. Uh, let's see, Celsius up 13%. <laughs> Again, one of my picks. 13%, uh, yeah, like $5, but it has taken a little bit of a tumble. It, it topped out at six, retraced back to five, and now here we are. But um, if we took a look at uh, Pat Ackerman. He is the uh, mathematician, statistician guy that I um, uh, pretty much took all his information and uh, did that nice little Voyager uh, recap. Uh, he's got Celsius, uh, I think, between like 50 and $60 for this year. Uh, so take a look at that. Uh, I hope so. Hope he's right. Ave, everything's looking good. And then, so we're really doing like 18, 24%, looking really great, right? But, ooh, 24% for Ava, or Avalanche. No idea what that is. Looks great. But uh, what else we got? I just want to make mention of one little thing, and that is Voyager is up to 92, uh, spot 92, up 50%, 400% for seven days. This is no coincidence. Uh, this is. Uh, we have been looking at this and we've been doing certain things uh, in the background as far as like uh, what we uh, chose to to study and Voyager is one of those things. It's at a dollar. 
when I did my price prediction, uh, which was just a week ago, uh, it was at 29 cents. And I said, it's going 30 bucks. And everybody's like, you're insane. And uh, here we are. So um, it could go up, it could go down. I'm not a short player on this one. This is a very long-term uh, type of hold. And uh, I think it's gonna do quite well. So uh, that's what's going on in the market. Let's, uh, let's jump into today's top stories, huh? Let's see what we got. So this was an article from Daily Hoddle. Uh, Goldman Sachs economist says, Bitcoin is maturing, details how much institutional money is in the market. And it's a nice, nice, nice article, very well written, uh, but uh, kind of boring. So why don't we just watch the video where they pulled this from, and then uh, we can actually, you know, talk about it. Because before we start, I want you to pay attention to what this gentleman here, uh, let's see, who is he? Uh, Steve, uh, Steve Sedgwick, um, global head of uh, commodities, uh, Jeff Curie. Pay attention to what he talks about it as far as like the amount of institutional money that's in here. And then also when he talks about the uh, gold, how much uh, market cap of gold. It's kind of interesting. So uh, here we go. If you look at it historically, in fact, we were just talking about downside risk before this call. You know, you go back and, you know, the last rally in, in 2018 got to 27,000 and next time it was at three. So if, you know, historical performance is a, you know, any guy, there's a lot of risk there. Um, but I think that the, the market is beginning to m become more mature. And I think any nascent market, you get that kind of volatility and those kind of risks that are associated with it. I think the key to creating some type of stability in the market is to see an increase in the participation of institutional investors. Right now, they're small. Sure. You know, it's about $700 billion of money in Bitcoin right now. Mm -hmm. um, of that, you know, roughly 1% of it's institutional money. Do you know how to value this? Because I know you know how to value a barrel of oil. I know you... Stop right there. So he said about 1% is in institutions. It's institutional money coming into Bitcoin. Uh, so I don't know. Because here's the thing. Here's Bitcoin treasuries. Uh, so you got three different categories that break it down. You got publicly traded companies, private companies, and ETF-like. Well, if you look at a grayscale Bitcoin trust, uh, they have almost 600,000 Bitcoin. There's only 21 million that'll ever be uh, out there in the world. Uh, we are only at 18.5 million. The last Bitcoin will be mined around 2140. Uh, that's what they tell me. I didn't do the math. <laughs> math is hard. So uh, I'm like, okay, sure. And uh, also you have to remember that um, there's a lot of Bitcoin that's lost. So people say, well, it's 18 and a half million circling supply. No, it's not. No, it's not. It's actually, I think it's about 16 million, 16 and a half million. I think at least 2 million has been lost. Imagine all those days in 2009, 2010, when everybody was mining Bitcoin, when it was like a, you know, a nickel. No one cared about that stuff. They threw away their, their uh, computers left and right. So I do not believe that there's 18 and a half million circulating. That just doesn't make any sense to me. So then you got CoinShares, Ruffler, 3IQ, Galaxy Bitcoin Fund. And uh, if you take all of them, all of them, it's, uh, it's, one, it's over 1 million Bitcoin. So let me do some quick math. And uh, so you got 20, 21 million. Let's just say 21 million, right? So 10% of 21 million was, uh, or 10% or of 21 is 2.1. 5% is uh, uh, one. So we're looking at one, uh, you know, 5%. So when he says 1% institutional money, and if you take it all, right? Sure, 5%, uh, or maybe like this, two and a half. It's just a little thing where I'm like, there's more institutional money than, than what people realize. And I think uh, a lot more is going to flow in, so uh, we will see. Anyhow, the next part gets pretty interesting where he says, well, how do you value that, uh, the, uh, the commentator or the, um, the host? He's like, how do you value that? Because you can value gold, you can value uh, a barrel of oil. So how do you value Bitcoin? I thought it was interesting what he said. You know how to value uh, iron ore, right? If you get it right or wrong, you know what your methodology is. What about your methodology for a cryptocurrency and for Bitcoin? Do you actually know how to get an accurate valuation on this? So if you treat it like a, a defensive asset, such that the, um, like, let's say like gold, um, and we look at the size of defensive assets like the gold market, um, you know, there is like $2 trillion, $3 trillion in, in those kind of markets. Now we start to ask how much of this defensive money could be allocated um, to something like a cryptocurrency or a Bitcoin. Right now, all the cryptocurrencies have about a trillion. Let's say it grows to two trillion. Then you just do the simple math. How many coins are out there? Divide it by that and you can end up with a fair value. Now, the question is that can give you some long run equilibrium, but the flows that you're referring to create a lot of volatility um, and a lot of uncertainty that makes it very difficult to forecast it. Do you have a recommendation on it at the moment? 
Um, you know, given the fact that, um, you know, you, you've seen a big run up across all of these markets, um, you know, I'm not going to take a strong view here, but um, this morning, you know, the, the traffic seems to be flowing one direction. Ah, should have went ballsy and just said, yeah, uh, put money into Bitcoin. You know what he could have said? <laughs> well, I mean, it does work from Goldman Sachs, whatever, but uh, he could have said, you know what, just Two to three percent, you know, the basic run, general run of the mill answer would have been fantastic. Two to three percent, you know, just put that in Bitcoin and it's all volatile, but, you know, really uh, would be good, especially because money's on fire. Uh, they're not going to say that, but he should. So what he said there, he goes, ah, there's like two or three trillion in gold. And I'm like, I don't think that's really true. So uh, taking a look at this, if you're new to the channel, welcome. Uh, if you're not, this will be kind of boring because I always talk about this. So this is money in markets. And if we take a look at, this was just out on May 27, 2020. So not too, not too long ago, right? Um, each square represents 100 billion, okay? Each square. That's a very, not, not too bad, right? Silver isn't that much, 43 billion. Cryptocurrency at the time was only 244 billion. 244 billion, now we're at a trillion, right? Military spending, US budget deficit, of course that went up, yeah. Coins and banknotes, Fed's balance sheet, there's billionaires, good for those guys, great, good for them. But here's gold. And gold, if you notice, it's around 11 trillion here. I think it's actually 12 trillion in reality, but let's just say 11 trillion. So when he talks about the numbers, he's just a little off, but you have to understand these are the numbers of all of gold. And if you believe, like I believe, that uh, Bitcoin is gold 2.0 or is digital gold, I don't see how uh, Bitcoin can't eat into that market cap. So let's just say it captures half. That would give it at five trillion. $5.5 trillion, six if it's on, you know, 12, math. So, I mean, if you're looking at uh, $6 trillion, and that's in Bitcoin, just Bitcoin alone, uh, not to mention the other uh, crypto assets that are out there, I mean, you're looking at $450,000, half a million right there, and uh, that's not too bad. So uh, check my math in the comments section, but uh, it's somewhere around there, and uh, I, I don't think you'll fault me if I'm a little bit off, like 50K here or there. So if anybody uh, has any problem with a... Uh, uh, Bitcoin above 400k, let me know. All right, so that is it for that piece. Let's move on to our next article.